Hello, my name is Donna Williams and I'm going to talk a little bit about living with primary immune deficiencies. So uh, I guess the first thing to say is that there's a difference between acquired immune deficiencies and primary immune deficiencies. So um, uh, acquired ones are ones you get later on in life um, and uh, the uh, primary immune deficiencies are uh, ones that you're either being born with or that you developed um, around six months of age once your mother's immunity wore off. I guess the second thing to talk about in primary immune deficiencies is that like any condition, um, primary immune deficiencies are like a fruit salad meaning that what makes up a primary immune deficiency for one person is not necessarily what makes up a primary immune deficiency for another person. So um, it's like saying all cancers are the same or all autism is the same or all agnosias are the same or you know it's, they're all different, um, different, uh, different mechanisms at work, different solutions to those, those problems. And also the progress of primary immune deficiencies differs as well, the journey of the immune deficiency itself. So there are some people who um, have primary immune deficiencies and, they, and their immune system is just immature and their immune system then matures and they become a person who doesn't have immune deficiency by the time they're they're a little older and so there are kids who were immune deficient before three and then sometime by the time you know they're three to five years old they are not immune deficient. There's other people who um, who start out with some level of immune deficiency and that as they get older and their body has been ravaged by more antibiotics, uh, been ravaged by lots of bugs, um, uh, developed a lot of sort of inflammatory uh, states or to immune complications that sort of stuff um, what started out as a, a less complex fruit salad becomes a progressively more complex fruit salad so for some of those people it's it's like how they start out crawl start out crawling <laughs> and end up limping their way through their life with immune deficiency so I want to also mention that immune deficiency affects different um, people in very different ways. So uh, it can affect gut function for example, so a lot of people with immune deficiency will have bowel problems and won't be able to digest their food properly. Um, that of course becomes a vicious cycle because then you can't uh, get the nutrients that you need to be able to uh, keep your immune system in as good a shape. <laughs> Uh, some people with immune deficiencies will, uh, will develop inflammatory states throughout their body which can include messing with gut function so you get an inflamed gut and you know tetchy bowel <laughs> um, a sort of irritable inflamed bowel a tendency towards things like um, uh, colitis and that sort of stuff but you can also get an inflamed blood brain barrier which is the the thing that's meant to protect your brain from undigested foods and um, bugs uh, crossing directly into the brain and if they do if, you, if the blood brain barrier the part that protects you the, um, becomes inflamed you can get all this garbage undigested foods bugs crossing directly into the brain and then you have higher risks of all kinds of things so some of the things that it can cause you know if you have that problem is imbalanced brain chemistry because you're not meant to get these little nasties up there and when when you do your brain responds with certain um, uh, brain chemicals and uh, it gets things out of sync and when you have um, problems with brain chemistry imbalances it tends to mean things like attention problems, mood anxiety, compulsive disorders, um, uh, cognitive dysfunction, um, processing uh, issues, uh, sensory perceptual fluctuations, um, uh, distortions, that sort of stuff. Um, so it's not 
unusual that people with immune deficiencies will have difficulty processing information, difficulty keeping up with incoming information, uh, and so quite a percentage of people with autism will have primary immune deficiencies and uh, also a percentage of people with primary immune deficiencies will have developmental disabilities and some of those people will um, will react to their developmental disabilities and their processing problems and uh, with with development and behaviors that get called autistic so um, in recent times we've seen um, some cases of people who have had um, immune reactions, um, allergic reactions to things like vaccinations and have developed things like brain injury and presented autistically, if you like. Um, and there's, you know, been argument, oh, they're not really autistic or these people aren't autistic or those people aren't autistic. But really, uh, there's such a variety of fruit salads that lead to a presentation of autism. It really doesn't matter whether the cause of your autism was brain injury associated with an allergic reaction to, um, to a very heavy vaccination schedule, which might be very rare, but it might have happened to you. It might be that you had infant stroke. It might be that you had um, rickets in, uh, and you didn't you know, develop the normal immune responses. Your brain developed differently. There's a whole load of roads that lead to Rome, so I'm not going to uh, argue about, uh, you know, if somebody develops autistically and they are having uh, those, the, the, all the behaviours and development that we call autistic, then that's fine with me. Um, I, my own case, my own fruit salad, I, uh, I developed um, rickets when I was, or I presented with rickets when I was about five months old. Rickets is um, about vitamin D deficiency, so I had the sort of banana arms, banana legs, <laughs> meaning that my limbs were bendy, so my bones were um, very soft and didn't develop the way they should. Um, I had some spinal issues associated with that and some joint issues associated with that. Um, rickets also changes your brain development, it changes the uh, you know, liver function, gut function, immune function, and it's very, it was very uncommon um, in the 60s for children to have rickets, but today with all the slip, stop, slap campaigns of the 70s, we have children who don't have enough vitamin D um, uh, because that's the main place we get it from, it's from the sun. Um, and we have, I think, around 50% of children in the UK are now D deficient and around 30% of children, even in a sunny country like Australia, are D deficient. But in, uh, in the 60s, it was quite uncommon. But um, uh, by six months, I had jaundice and began having recurrent infections. So that meant constant ear, nose, throat, lung <laughs> um, uh, uh, infections, eye infections, <laughs> bladder infections, uh, mostly later on there's bladder infections. Um, uh, also um, a really dodgy gut, <laughs> so lots of constipation, lots of loose bowel stuff, mostly constipation. It's just the gut not talking to me, lots of inflammatory stuff. Uh, allergy symptoms, the uh, hives, um, uh, hives, allergy rashes. Um, I've got sort of dermatitis -y stuff at the moment in my ears and around here. Um, asthma, uh, that sort of thing. The recurrent infections meant that I was on antibiotics. Um, around every six weeks, I had infections. The infections would commonly last for, like lung infections would last around three months um, and I'd just get over one for like maybe a couple of weeks, maybe a month, maybe two months if I was really lucky and I'd be right back there again. So I, it's a very different childhood when you live like that, you're constantly, I don't know, you feel like a grebe, you feel really, and you get treated like, you know, can you stop, can you stop? sniffing, can you stop uh, coughing, can you, you know, and you've got sort of all gooby nose and gooby ears and mucky chest all the time and 
Uh, so and and you've when you're from that background, you've had such a lot of pain because you know you lay one side ear infection, you lay the other side ear infection. You know you try and swallow your throat's you know you can barely swallow and it's incredibly sore and it just makes you want to die you breathe and your lungs hurt you've got all soreness in the back of your 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 nasal passages and um so in inflammation and being constantly prone to infection it's really emotionally challenging but it also changed me as a person it made me really happy whenever i was healthy so I became a very happy-go-lucky person and uh, I think that it was my defense, my way of not looking at being ill, which was worked for me. Um, uh, when I was older, I was about um, 17 and that was the first time that I was actually told about my immune deficiencies. I was in hospital and they were taking some blood and they came back and said uh, we need to take some more blood and after they did this for the third time I said is there something wrong with me and they said well uh, we've been through three slides of your blood and we can't find a white cell and uh, your white cells are what helps you fight bugs so um, they were pretty concerned about that it's sort of uh, the opposite to leukemia and I was actually tested for leukemia when I was um, two and a half as part of all my developmental and health stuff in a hospital assessment. And um, so they were aware that there was something very wrong with the immune department even then. At that time, my eyelashes were coming out. I bruised really easy. I had bleeding gums. Um, but here I was, 17, and I didn't sort of really understand that. And then I was in my 20s and still getting lots of infections and by now the thrush was fairly constant so I was constantly itchy and you know thrushy tongue and it's just horrible um and I felt like I like, felt like I'm like dying and I'm only in my 20s and um I I had then lots of bladder infections and then I got eye infections respiratory tract infections all at once and now I wasn't responding to antibiotics and I was only 25 years old. I developed really bad chronic fatigue. I was having uh, the shakes turning blue, fainting. My lips were blue. It was awful. My joints were jumping in and out of there. Um, my, you know, my wrists, my ankles, my knees were jumping in and out of the, the, the sort of sockets and joints and things. Um, uh, yeah, it was just horrible. I had sciatica all the time, up and down my legs and back. Um, uh, and then what happened was I got sent along to an allergy clinic who uh, did a lot of testing and then diagnosed me with multiple food and chemical allergies and I began on rotation diets and eventually, you know, lots of immune specialists later, I was um, uh, dairy casein free gluten-free, um, low salicylate, no sugar. I was on an anti-candida program for around 20 years. Every time I'd have some sugar, infections would just walk straight in. And we couldn't work out why I was so uh, buggy, so easy to get sick. And we looked a little closer and I was diagnosed with IgA deficiency. So I had no secretory IgA. They used a saliva test and um, said, you know, there's no, so what's IgA? And they said it's your first line of defense in your ears, nose, mouth, throat, uh, lungs, stomach. It's the lines of the mucous membranes um, throughout your body and helps signal your white cells of where there's bugs. And it also helps tell your stomach what food you've eaten so you can send the enzymes to digest it. So having none of it is not a good thing. Not everybody who has IgA deficiency has really significant health disorders, but some people with IgA deficiency will be fairly constantly allergic, have, have some digestive problems, have tendencies towards a whole load of health issues. <laughs> so then added to that, um, I, I had a little reprieve for about seven years. Um, I was so happy to not be sick all the time. And then I started getting sick again. Um, one of the bugs uh, knocked out my vision in one eye. Apparently it had caused inflammation of the optic nerve and uh, I luckily got my 
my vision back after three months <laughs> it was quite fractured and terrible and they thought oh she's got MS and whatever but I didn't have MS which is good and then I got diagnosed with IgG2 deficiency so this is another um, immunoglobulin and there's IgG's IgA, IgG's, IgE, IgM <laughs> and they're part of your immune system so they're all like the brains behind what your white cells do really <laughs> and um, I hadn't I was um, deficient in IgG2 and this one meant I couldn't fight encapsulated bacteria so that was its job and that meant I got a haemophilus bug which is a bug that most uh, kids have you know kids under four are immune to it so kids over four are generally immune to it and I was walking around with no immunity to that to strep to staph um, there's a number of encapsulated bacteria and so next thing I had to get vaccinated to the bugs I couldn't fight and I had to be on antibiotics daily which is called profi antibiotics prophylactic what antibiotics and I was told I'd be on these for the rest of my life so I then found out I was allergic to legumes so I have soy and peanut allergy and when you're allergic to those you tend to be allergic to all the legumes so I came off all the peas and beans and then I tried some pea soup and it was just migraines, shit city, uh, cramping <laughs> and psych stuff. So I'd been on medication for the mood anxiety compulsive disorder stuff for years and years but when I came off all the legumes I was able to go off the medication so that was at least one benefit and I thought okay great so I'm dealing with this antibiotic drama, I'm IgA and IgG2 deficient, it's going to be okay couple of months later I had cancer <laughs> so uh, I was really distressed about that because I know that there's you know having immune deficiencies is quite a risk risk factor and I went through breast cancer had double mastectomy and was faced with chemo going through chemo with immune deficiencies is just the most shocking thing to have to do you already can't trust your body you know what it does and um and now i i went through chemo so um i ended up with no white cells uh each time and they had to give inject me with a drug that forces my body to make white cells called Nulaster. so i was really lucky because otherwise your own gut bacteria and various things will just kill you uh, the bacteria in your own body will just kill you and um, uh, yes yeah, so I had no white cells whatsoever my score was 0, 0.00 <laughs> and they um, they magically made my body make some and uh, that was pretty cool uh, although I had really significant health dramas with chemo and as you can see immune deficient and survived chemo yay but in the meantime during chemo my IgG subclasses because there's four different kinds of IgGs came back and I was um, immune deficient in three of the four IgGs one of those which is a bit of a worry was IgG4 and that one gives you an ability to respond to vaccinations and to register which bugs you've had so if you've built up any immunity to bugs um, which is a fabulous thing if you can get it <laughs> um, if you've built up some immunity regardless of what bugs they are and you end up with IgG4 deficiency you can lose the memory of that immunity and if they vaccinate you to a bug you may not be covered for that bug at all so it became pretty hard during chemo I had to go around with a mask so I went to the supermarket the shopping center and stuff with that I felt really embarrassed but I handled it I'm really proud of myself for dealing with it so it was really great it is really hard to adapt later on thinking about okay what work am I going to do because I've now been through cancer and immune deficiencies I've got sleep apnea I got diagnosed with dysautonomia which means I can't regulate my um, my breathing my brain isn't regulating my breathing properly so at night I fall asleep I stop breathing so I have a machine now that makes me breathe I am struggling to regulate my heart so sometimes if I'm doing trying to exercise it will leap 50 to 100 beats per minute in either direction it I'll exercise and it won't speed up <laughs> it'll go really high and it won't come down when I slow down so it's a bit precarious 
have problems with all the things in the autonomic nervous system department. At the moment I'm managing, I hope I keep managing, but it's really one of those things after years and years of being ravaged by <laughs> antibiotics and lots of bugs I couldn't fight, including I had the measles for around 30 years. So I got them when I was two to three years old and I had a flare up of them for 10 months in my 30s and they'd flare up every six weeks and I was told that I didn't have enough immunity to fight them off and that these would have been, that would have been in my system all those years. So you can understand why eventually, you know, it's just fried the works and you end up with, I guess, what I call um, falling apart syndrome. I don't know what I can say positive about that except to say, you know, you've just got to do the best with what you've got and not just physically, but socially, cognitively, <laughs> spiritually, in your personality, in your outlook, enjoy it. You know, it's <laughs> life short. I'm now 48 years old. Um, I, um, you know, I, I, a lot of people with immune issues don't necessarily have the same lifespan as other people. They might. Uh, the average for people with chronic variable immune deficiency, a lot of the women have a lot of challenges. You know, I may not be, a lot of them don't go past 55. <laughs> No, I'm 48. That doesn't look good. But I'm believing that that's just a bell curve. So who says I'm not going to be outside that bell curve? Why not? Why not believe it? But I don't think that I'm necessarily going to live to be 85. <laughs> and uh, that's okay. We're not all designed the same. And so I am retiring um, from a lot of my face-to-face -face work. I'm working remotely. I do consulting online. I do lectures online, um, I'm an artist, I'm still a writer, all that sort of stuff. It gives me the ability to stay involved with the world without catching all its bugs. <laughs> um, but, you know, most people retire at 65 and why shouldn't I retire at 48 if maybe it, I'm going to spend my next 20 years being retired um, before I, I leave <laughs> and, you know, I might be gone by the time I'm 65. So where other people retire at 65 because they might live to be 85 I'm open-minded that maybe I won't but the the only thing I can control is that hopefully I won't have regrets of never having taken the time out and just hung out mucked around and enjoy what I can enjoy really yeah it's a pain <laughs> and so everyone with immune deficiencies is different and some people have to be on IV you know they have to go and get um, intravenous immunoglobulins I'm not in that situation yet I'm open-minded that uh, that might become a reality for me at some point uh, you know there, there's been some times where we've had to consider those kind of things I developed uh, spinal stenosis which is a degenerative disorder in my spine associated with inflammation. So the, the ligament around the spinal cord has um, thickened up and it's squeezing my spinal cord. I've got problems with my vertebrae where they've been really soft and the discs have punctured them. And that's probably because of the original uh, vitamin D deficiency. Um, and the discs also have herniated into the spinal cord, but mostly I've got strategies from the physio, etc., to get around that, and I'm avoiding the whole back surgery thing. Hopefully, I believe I can avoid it for five years. I might even avoid it for ten years. But I had the most horrendous sciatica until the um, the physio taught me how to uh, avoid the stuff that causes the the pain cycles, and that's wonderful because I had a really bad pain storm that set off. Um, a paralysis for about four days in my thigh and lumbar muscles which is where your brain shuts down the muscles to protect you from further damaging the spine. So I sound like a shipwreck but I hope that I'm really positive uh, a joie de vivre shipwreck <laughs> and that's all you can really you know wish for. Most people don't feel like 85 when they're only 48 and they don't have to face those things some people do and I want to say you know I am normal this is my normality and I want to face it really positively because I'm not the only person with this and there are kids a lot younger who 
who are going through what I went through, some of whom are going through it much worse, and uh, some of whom don't make it to 48. And so really, in immune deficiency terms, I'm old age. So uh, I can live with that. Anyway, I'm Donna Williams. Thanks for listening. <laughs>